Good morning, people. Uh, this is Josh back here from Inside Wrestling Truth. Um, Survivor Series is officially over. Um, we seen the big deal with Sting last night. I know we have TLC coming up next, and then after that, we have uh, one of my favorite events of the year in the Royal Rumble. Um, in the past, I've did reviews on SummerSlams and uh, Survivor Series, but I never did one on the Royal Rumble, and that's what I'm going to start doing uh, each week until the Royal Rumble gets here. I'm going to have a Royal Rumble review, uh, but anyway, today we're going to open up with the very first Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble 1988 from Hamilton, Ontario from the Cops Coliseum, uh, January 24th, 1988. Uh, this was the very first Royal Rumble. Uh, this one wasn't on pay-per-view, it was on regular TV, I believe USA Network. Um, but let's get right on into the show. Uh, the show open up opens up with Hogan with uh, clips of what's going to happen during the night, like the Hogan Andre uh, contract signing, the Dino Bravo uh, weightlifting competition, the Royal Rumble match, uh, Rick Rude. You know, it just shows everything that's going to be happening on the evening. Um, and then we have Vince and uh, Jesse Ventura open up the show. Uh, the house, I believe, was eight, like around 18,000 then. Uh, remember, this is 1988. Uh, our first match, there really wasn't that many matches on this event. Uh, but the first match was Ravishing Rick Rude. First Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. This match lasted about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Very, very good match. I gave it three and a half stars. Uh, in my opinion, I thought it was the best match on, on of the night. Uh, just a very good old school technical match. Uh, they told a story, man. And uh, anytime you have two guys like Rick Rude and Ricky Steamboat in the ring at the same time, you know what's going to make for uh, a very good match, and it did. Um, then we go, oh, by the way, Rick Rude, uh, Ricky Steamboat wins this match uh, by disqualification over Rick Rude. Uh, but then we go down to like you remember where they were mean gene would always do the interviews before the entrance way back in the 80s and early 90s we would go down there and it would be mean gene and jesse ventura and of course the they all had the weight bench set up there and dino bravo would come out with his manager can't really think of his manager's name or offhand uh but uh, they would try to set the world record for uh, weightlifting. Uh, Dino Bravo started out 365. He would keep putting weight on and weight on and weight on. And then when he got to the world record, he couldn't do it. And uh, Jesse Ventura, you know, spotted him, helped him get the bar back up on the on the bench on the rack there. And uh, you know. Dino Bravo's acting like he set a new world record. Uh, and Vince McMahon's on commentary. There's like no way he did it, you know. Uh, but that's the rest of the night. Jesse Ventura would call Dino Bravo the world's strongest man. Um, it was an okay segment, I guess. But it, it seemed like it dragged on forever and ever and ever. But I guess for that time in 1988, it might have been a cool thing to do. Uh, if any of you guys remember the segment, let me know what your thoughts were on it. Um, I didn't dig it too much. 
I was never a real big Dino Bravo fan, but this is my opinion, guys. Um, let's see, we went from Dino Bravo, and then we go to uh, back to Jesse Ventura and Vince McMahon, and we're talking about WrestleMania 3. Um, you know, Jesse Ventura is talking about how Andre beat Hogan. Less than three minutes. Vince is, of course, saying Hogan's shoulder was up. It wasn't the three. Uh, there was. There were bit. This was all during the time when DiBiase. This was right before WrestleMania four. So this is when DiBiase was trying to buy the belt. Hogan wouldn't sell it to him, so he hired Andre the Giant. Uh, you know. And then they would go to, they would have the contract signing in the ring. It would be Virgil, Million Dollar Man, Andre in the ring, uh, and Hogan. Uh, Andre and Hogan, you know, of course, were at the table doing the uh, autograph signing. Um, you know, Hogan signs a contract. It takes Andre the Giant a few minutes to sign it. Um... Then DiBiase kind of tells him to put a stamp of approval on it. Uh, and then about this time, Andre, you know, beats up Hogan, throws a table on Hogan, uh, and leaves. And that was the end of the contract signing. Real simple. This was the matchup. If you all remember, this was the contract signing for the rematch at Saturday night's main event. Uh, I believe it was on February 5th, 1988. Uh where Andre wins the belt and then gives it to DiBiase if y'all remember that deal but anyway um, then we go after that we go to the Royal Rumble match the first ever Royal Rumble match if you remember the first ever Royal Rumble match uh, you know that Hacksaw Jim Duggan won the Royal Rumble match but I'm gonna run down these are there was only 20 guys in the first Royal Rumble, if some of you guys didn't know that, but I'm pretty sure most of you do. Um, there's only 20 participants in the 1988 Royal Rumble, and this is how they entered the ring. I'm going to just run them down to you real quick. We had Bret Hart, Tito Santana, Butch Reed, The Anvil, Jake the Snake Roberts, Harley Race, Jim Brunzel. Sam Houston, Dangerous Danny Davis, Boris Zukov, uh, Don Morocco, Nikolai Volkov, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Ron Bass, B. Brian Blair, Hillbilly Jim, uh, Dino Bravo, Ultimate Warrior, One Man Gang, and JYD. Um, the last two men in the ring would be uh, One Man Gang and Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Uh, it looked like several times that one man gang was going to uh, eliminate Duggan, uh, and then uh, one man gang Duggan was against the ropes, and one man gang took off running. And then we seen the old fashioned uh, "I'll just move and you'll fall over the top rope" deal, and Duggan picked up the win. Uh, not a bad Survivor Series match, but not one of the best either. Um, it had a lot of mid card guys in it, you know. I think it mainly because it was just an experiment at the time. But uh it had a lot of mid card guys in it. No Savage, no honky tonk man, uh a lot of people not in the Royal match. Um then after that we would have some more interviews. We'd have Hogan interviewing talking about his match with Andre. We'd have Andre and DiBiase and Virgil interviewing talking about Hogan and then we would go to our main event this is really what got me this was the main event of Royal Rumble 1988 it was two out of three falls the Islanders versus the Young Stallions um, I gave this match two stars um, I was always a huge fan of Haku or Ming, whatever you want to call him. But this match was just boring to me. It was just 
having the young Stallions, Stallions in the main event. I don't really remember Jim Powers doing anything but this. And Paul Roma, all I ever remember him as is a reject for horseman. I don't remember at the time, but if there's anybody, any old school wrestling fans out there like the Iceman or somebody could tell me, were the Young Stallions ever actually over? Because I really don't remember them being. And why would this be the main event? I just wanted to know. But I gave it two stars. Uh, on that match. Overall, I gave the whole event six stars. Um, I thought it lacked matches. Uh, and they definitely, you know, the Royal Rumble match wasn't the best, but it was the first one, so I'll give it that. And, uh, like I said, I think it was kind of an experiment at first, and it would just take off, uh, take off after that. But this has been your 1988 Royal Rumble review. Uh, like I said, I'll be doing one of these every week. Next week I'll do 1989. Um, if you're an old school, old school fan, you might like these reviews. Uh, if you're a younger fan, maybe you can learn a little something. Uh, but yeah, this has been my Royal Rumble 1988 review. Uh, I'll have another video tonight after Raw. I'm really, really looking forward to Monday Night Raw tonight. Um, wow. Survivor Series last night was kick-ass. We'll say that. But uh, I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.